Nice. John Henry Johnson. Nice work. Woo. Thank you. So do you read music or do you just kind of play it? I, I can read music. I, I usually do that when I'm learning classical pieces because that's More how they're precise. typically written. Yeah. Uh, but for this stuff, I'm mostly uh, listening to the song. Sometimes yeah. I'll pull up like, I want the music for the bass because how does the bass work? Uh -huh. And I'll look that up in whatever yeah. form it comes. But it's, it can be pretty loose in this kind of, you know. Form, yeah, there's, right? this isn't like an official thing that, I mean, there are people who do it, but right. there's no like uh, organized way of doing it. Right, <laughs> so yeah. You're not going to get in trouble by the finger picking police or whatever. Oh, my, my classical <laughs> guitar teacher would probably riot if he saw what I was, the sacrilegious stuff I'm doing here. Um, so, okay, so you kind of just hear the song and play it. Yeah. My, my curiosity is like if I said, you know, <laughs> Mr. Blue Sky, you know, how, like, how long would it take you to like listen to that and figure out a, a, the playful, you know, finger picking? Uh, it depends when that's just by ear, it can take like yeah. a few hours or something, but a lot of times I can like pull up the chords or whatever. Yeah. And that's like a shortcut. Yeah. Then you so can... something like that I could do in like five, 10 minutes. If I know what? the song real well, really, if I don't need to know the song, I'll have to listen to it a few times wow. to like lock it in. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, once you practice it and you like, you know, all the chords, you know, right. all the scales, it's just, you're then just you putting feel it together. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. 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 Um, whew. I really need to get a guitar. <laughs> Are there any, you, you, so you play Yamaha, Wh what's a good beginner for anyone out there that would? The one you're going to practice on, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I started with a little $60, basically like children's electric mm -hmm. guitar, uh, but it's really the one you're going to play. Sometimes you want to get a nicer guitar. Oh, so, so don't just think, oh, I'm going to buy a cheap one and learn, well, like get the one you want to play. If you're the kind of person who can do that, like I am, I, I can just go buy a, a cheap little thing and, and learn the thing. But mm -hmm. you know, some people, they do that and then it sounds bad and they get discouraged. Uh, so if you're the kind of person with a lot of disposable income and you want to get a nice guitar so that you feel good yeah. while you're playing, that's something you can do. But yeah, it's what's a good, good acoustic guitar go for these days? I have no idea. Uh, you're going to want to start probably about a hundred. Um, oh, that's not bad. A learner's guitar, a good like mid-range guitar mm -hmm. is probably three to five hundred. Uh, above that's over a thousand, and then the professional guitars usually two k or more. Okay. This is actually only about a thousand, um, but the electronics I've had installed are a a thousand? different. Oh wow! For the guitar alone. Yeah. Uh, but all the electronics are separate stuff. Nice. <laughs> and then you got what's this do down here? Uh, this is my rocket ship. Uh, this is like a a brain that takes. If you see, I have two pickups here. Mm -hmm. So, this one is just this neck pickup and it just gets the strings. I, I can even isolate things here. Um, so if I do this, you get the strings, but you don't get, you don't get any of that. Ah, no internal. Um, so, and then this other one picks up a pickup I have under the strings and then this microphone Inside. right here. Yeah. yeah. And then it goes into here, it gets all fed into this mixer. I balance the pickup so that it sounds really nice. Um, and then I do a few other things. Uh, that's just a reverb pedal. Yeah. And then the octaver is the other cool thing. So since I have, since I have this channel where I only have the strings and none of the percussion, mm -hmm. I actually run that channel into this octaver pedal, and it's what lets me get that big low bass ah. energy. So if I turn that off, um, it still sounds decent, yeah. but. Yeah. And it only gets the low strings. That's it's polyphonic is the word for it. Mm. So um, these don't get low notes, but I get lower. Ooh, you hear how that? That's warm. It doubles it, so it, it sounds like I have a bass guitar yeah. in addition to me playing the bass parts. Nice. All right, let's give out his um, info again. Uh, right? Yep. There you go. And if anyone did a search on Facebook or Instagram, it would be, you know, the John. Yeah, John Henry, Henry Johnson, Johnson music uh, or whatever. John Henry's music. Okay. There's a John Henry music. Don't don't go there. Yeah. He's much better looking, but <laughs> he doesn't play a guitar like me. Yeah, so. you won't be finding this. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's talk about your your first CD. Uh, you yeah. recorded that at home. Yeah. Released uh, that. Is that out on Spotify? Well, like where would someone? Yeah, yeah. Spot. It's on Spotify. It's on uh, Amazon, Apple Music. All the major uh, platforms have it. It's and on your website. Um, there, there should be some links okay. on my website. I have some physical copies, but they're sort of limited right yeah. now, so I'm saving them for special things. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. um, okay. And then I also know that you are. Did are you working? No, you did a D and D. So uh, project. Right. So Dungeons and Dragons for you non-nerds out there. Uh, I happen to be a former nerd. Yes, you have your nerd card yes, still. Yes, yes. It's uh, probably been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it never gets revoked. Yeah. 
Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I love playing it. I run games for my friends and family sometimes. Uh, and when I was doing it, I liked to play music in the background to sort of set the mood. And for the campaign I was running, I couldn't quite find enough of the right mm -hmm. kind of music. So I went ahead and just wrote it on my classical guitar with some effects and other things. Uh, and then I released that to the wider public, and there were a lot of other people playing D&D who liked that as well. So I, that album's out there. It's called Song, Sounds in the Salt Marsh. Uh, and I'm releasing another one here soon. But it's just That's all cool. ambient instrumental yeah. music. Could be played behind like Stranger Things or something. Totally, and, and I've used Stranger Things in my campaigns before. It's nice. That's very good, creepy music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that that last uh, what was it? The last five show? Whatever the last season was. Yeah. Do you watch Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah. I'm all caught up. It's it was pretty it was pretty crazy. I'm not <laughs> caught up. I need to. I started and I forgot all about it and traveled. But yeah, I need to get caught up because I hear it's yeah phenomenal. Yeah. Um. So where was that recorded? I guess at home as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, all inside my home studio. That one was my classical guitar, so I don't have all this stuff for that, mm. but just a couple mics. And then, I again, I send it off to a guy to master it, and I can ship it on Spotify. It's a, People talk about how like it's hard to be a musician these mm -hmm. days because of how inter how everything is. Saturated. Some people think it's easier back in the day, but honestly, this is like the best time you could be a musician ever. It's so easy to get people to hear yes. your music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As long as there's not a damn pandemic going around. Yeah, that does make things trickier, but <laughs> but we find a way. Um, <laughs> do you have, when you're writing your original stuff, do you have a, I don't know, a typical way of writing? Do you, you know, kind of yeah. sit down with an idea, like the storyline, and then kind of come, or do you just kind of sit down, and how do you? It depends a little bit, but the way that I've had that's had the most success is definitely starting with a story I want to tell. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes I'll tune my guitar a certain way too because I'm like, this tuning oh. sounds the right way. And then I just start, okay, what happens at the beginning of the song? Yeah. How can I make that sound like yeah. the story and, and so on and so forth? So it is always a story that I'm trying yeah. to tell. Because you don't always put the lyrics, but it's yeah. a, it is a story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I want, when you listen to it, and that's why a lot of times I'll explain my song beforehand because once you have the context, right. you can listen to it in the way that I'm writing it and then and visually it blossoms like yeah. as you play like yeah yeah I can see the bunny rabbits running right. or whatever it is it's very different from just listening to music just like driving and just yeah not yeah. really paying attention yeah um so I mean like you could I mean you typically write songs like in a day you you some polished it some take weeks and uh, some just like come and my yeah. best ones honestly they like they come and then it's all done in a few yeah. minutes and okay I have the song it's I'm ready to record <laughs> yeah okay. That's awesome. It's got to be, I don't know, that, that's just got to be a good feeling. Because they're like little babies, you know? It's like Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, a lot of times it feels like you're, you're channeling something else. It doesn't even feel like me in the moment oh, when yeah. I'm doing it. It yeah. just kind of comes out, and then I'm just like... You were the medium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, that just came right through me. It's a weird, it's a very weird feeling. I love it. Um, and then uh, the songs that you play, you know, that are covers. Yeah. Um, are those this, you know... Songs that you find challenging, songs you just love to sing in the car. Most of them are just songs I like. Yeah. Like, I, I like this song, so I'm going to play it. I like it. Sometimes I'll hear something on the radio, and I'll be like, you know, that could sound really good on guitar. Yeah. Um, and sometimes my wife will be like, you need to do this song. Yeah. And I'll be like, whatever. And yeah. then she'll say, you need to do this song. I'll be like, whatever. And then, like, three months later, I, I listen to it. I'm like, oh, man, I should have been doing this yeah. song for ages. Yeah. <laughs> you were right about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and uh, the... When you grew up, what was your what was your influence? Was it Van Halen at the time? Uh, initially, yeah, like Van Halen, Journey, Led Zeppelin, all okay. that like 70s, 80s hard rock yeah. stuff. And then later on, classical guitar composers like uh, Francisco Terrega, um, Augustine Barrios, um, my teacher Joseph Williams. Uh, and then for acoustic, like fingerstyle, like Tommy Emmanuel, Chat Atkins, uh, some other people who do this percussive thing, like mm -hmm. Michael Hedges, Mike Dawes, uh, Luca Striganoli, those are all names of, of people. These are all names I can Google later. <laughs> yeah, of people like, I steal from. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, it's all it's all out there. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So what's what's in the works uh, next? Yeah, I'll, in, a, in a second, I'll play you some of my originals, uh, and I'll show you how they work. And one of the originals is called Laws of Motion, and it's an interpretation of Newton's Three Laws. So my next album, uh, that was my favorite song. Nerd alert. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I love science and, and philosophy and, and music. It's I'm very nerdy. Um, so the next album is going to be all of that. It's going to be oh. different scientific concepts interpreted as... Uh, Are you gonna do, do you have a pie song? 
Uh, n not math so much, more <laughs> oh, like okay. in the oh, physics. Okay, so like gotcha. Doppler effect, quantum entanglement, things like that. Okay. See, I don't even, I, I can't even make a joke <laughs> because I don't even know. Yeah, um, it's, it's not very funny stuff. It's very boring. But I no, but you're going to make it, yeah, you make it fun and, and cool. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to get out of the way and then I'm definitely going to uh, pick your brain more about D&D &D because, okay. I mean, it's been 30 years. I mean, a long time. Yeah. Probably more uh, as old as you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been probably. that long. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to get out of the way. You, uh, you're going to do your thing. We'll come back about 8.50 or so. Sounds good. All right.